Hey, -o. look what we got again. It's Chris. Hey. And he's back from the city. The city treated him a little rough. A little skateboarding accident. Sprained his ankle. So uh, we're getting him on a lot of seated jobs today, including doing the fillets on all these beams in the floor here. So this will be the new battery bank right along here. So nice and central, nice and fairly low. Not too low, but fairly low. We'll seal up the bottom side. And uh, yeah, she'll be a nice tidy spot. And this will actually make up the step that helps us get over this beam. So, nice tidy fillet lines in there. Look at that. That's his first one. Look how clean that is. Learns quick. And yeah, we're gonna try and get this floor ship shape all tidied up because I want to screw down the plywood permanently. And I want to start working on the front of the boat so that I can get front and middle sealed and I can have a sealed galley. And I can start making it a real galley with paint and insulation. It'll be nice. I'll even heat it maybe. That'll be nice for this winter. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. All right, well, since I haven't been doing such a good job at filming because this is kind of a little bit messy work and epoxy fingers and cell phone filming don't go hand in hand so well. Instead, I'm gonna explain what I've done. Um, basically, we're building a floor and we're building pockets to hold it. But the general premise is if we keep the floor in the pockets and not epoxy to the actual hull, um, it could still allow the warm to do its flexing thing. So um, now some of you might think, I mean like flexing like crazy amounts, I'm not. Basically when this thing in heavy conditions, when it comes off a wave and slams into the other side, some of that concussive force is transmitted to the beams. And it allows the hulls to flex ever so slightly from one to the other. Um, you can really see it when you stand on one side of the hull, on one side of the boat, and uh, you're going through waves and you can see that the other hull is just barely moving a little bit off from the, from the one you're standing on. Um, so, in order to facilitate that, this is what I've done. Over here you see we've got the floor. Now this is drilled and epoxied all together. It's gonna have plywood epoxy to the underside with it's all coated in epoxy, and then the top coat is also done in epoxy. So it'll be a giant epoxy um, box frame. Very, very strong, very stiff. Um, but over here in the corners, these, this piece and the, the uh, double thick support underneath, that's all epoxied and lug bolted to the, there's my lug bolts, to the uh, hull. But this part where it touches, there's a little tiny bit of gap and uh, yeah, it's not epoxy, it just fits in that pocket. Now that's step number one um, in ensuring that I have a little bit of play. Um, but step number two is I kind of want some more securities. I now have a kind of phobia of floors falling out from underneath me. So what I'm going to do next is tab in some bulkheads that'll have lug bolts in them tying the actual beam to the hull. Now the bulkheads will be epoxied and sealed to the hull and then the lug bolts will go through each beam keeping them from separating out. Um, that shouldn't ever be necessary because the beams will hold the boat together and the beams are big 4x10s, 4x12s. Um, so we don't really have to worry too much about that. But just in case, a catastrophic failure, that's an extra last resort um, that should keep the floor from kind of moving around too much. So yeah, that's the idea. Again, also the bulkheads will help me shape a little bit of the uh, edge down below that'll help deflect the water as they come up and slap the underside of the uh, cabin floor. We got got to figure out some more solutions to help break that. But again, this is higher, much higher up than a lot of other catamarans. The floor is still much higher. Um, but in warms, they tend to dig up a little bit deeper. So potato, potato. Either way, I'm going to get some slap on the underside of this bridge, whether I make it, you know, 10 feet high or two inches off the water. It's going to get slapped one way or the other. So. I just want to kind of figure out how to make that as comfortable and as safe as possible. I think that we're striking an even medium here, hopefully. We'll see. Okay, so let's get back to work. Get back to work, Krish. You're taking it too easy. Look at you, lounging around in the dinghy. Who do you think you are? This guy's got a sprained ankle right now and he is just busting his balls. basically have to force him to take time off from time to time. 
Oh, I've had a lot of hardworking people on this boat, no doubt about it. A lot harder working than me, I'll tell you that much. But, uh, Chris, I think you take the, the cake for the hardest working <laughs> guy to ever come out on my boat. But yeah, we just got one more beam. What are you lying around for? Come on, we got to get the last beam in. Ooh. One more. Let's do it. notice it doesn't go all the way out and that's because the, those bulkheads I was telling you about. This is the template for one. It's really kind of hard to see what it does until you stuff it in one of these spots here and it's really kind of a pain to get it in the right spot. But basically they glue up to the hull and then we're going to put a lug bolt right through the beam right there. And uh, yeah, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, so 14 of them just for this section of the floor. It's a little involved, but the nice thing is we'll have all these like shelves all along here, lots of storage space, and keep the floor from maybe separating one day uh, when we don't want it to anyway. So, copy this on the plywood 14 times. And uh, move on to the next step. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's about as far as we got. As you can tell, the sun has set, and uh, I kind of don't like to run my power tools in the middle of the bay after the sunset. I've already irritated my neighbors plenty with this boat build project, so I try not to push it. Um, but yeah, we've got a few of them dry fitted in here and some of them need to be adjusted a little bit, but so far so good. It's gonna look so cool once that's all in. And yeah, then we'll be that much closer to having a sealed up boat. Not to mention, it'll be a lot stronger and let my mind finally rest after what was ostensibly a completely self-inflicted but nonetheless traumatizing experience of my entire floor falling out. <laughs> uh, I can only imagine, I haven't posted a video yet of that happening, but I can only imagine what the comments are like on that one. Uh, <laughs> anyways, for those of you uh, still sticking with me, still watching, uh, thanks. I am uh, a human and not a particularly organized human at that, so um, maybe maybe it's understandable that I am a big hot mess and this boat project is a big hot mess and I don't really know what I'm doing most of the time, but it is what it is. And this boat will get built and we'll tweak it and we'll learn and we'll make it better every single day. All right, well, that's it for me tonight. I'm gonna crash. Um, check in for the next episode because we're getting back into vlogging with a real camera. It showed up today, so I'm really excited to uh, get cracking at that and um, yeah, and to continue moving along the project and actually be able to show all of it to you guys because yeah, yeah, filming on a cell phone sucks. But see you tomorrow.